Mara. And we're on the Mara River at the moment with one of the murderous Mara crocodiles. And this is a, the, the big male crocodile that dominates the main crossing. And uh, he is absolutely massive. He probably weighs about 1,000 to 1,300 kilograms. And the water is actually quite high compared to what it was yesterday. The river's come up. And uh, I don't think we had enough local rain to warrant this rise in the water. It's, it's from the Mao Highlands where the Mara River sources. And it takes about seven or eight hours uh, for the rain to get down here. And normally at this time of the year, the, the water's a lot higher. But there we go, that is, look at that thing. It is a beast. Uh, these crocodiles absolutely glut themselves during the migration and then barely feed for the rest of the year. At the moment he's getting a bit of warmth on his body. Now crocodiles are quite interesting because they're one of the only reptiles that has be able, which is able to control their body temperature. Most reptiles are completely reliant on, on sun to get going in the morning or to, to, to really sort of get going or to maintain that high body temperature they need to, to move. Now crocodiles are quite interesting because they're, they're able to, to a degree, and they still need to bask in the sun, but they are able to generate heat and control their own t body temperature to to a very small degree, which makes them quite different from other reptiles. And one must remember that, well, now crocodiles have been in the current form for about 8 million years. Uh, there's quite a big misconception that crocodiles have been the same for about 150 to 200 million years, which is, is not true at all. Um, there have been crocodilians for that long and much longer, but now crocodiles in current form have only been 8 to 10 million years, which of course is, makes us look like mere babes in the wood in, in comparison. And that, that actually reminds me, talking about that, uh, that there was that really interesting discovery on on human bones that were discovered in the 60s that were then thought to be about 40,000 years old that have now turned out to be three over 300,000 years old making the oldest oldest homo sapien bone discovery ever and uh, it, it 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 it's led to some quite big debates in the in the in the well, paleoanthropology world but we'll discuss that a little bit later. Let's just look at that gnarly, gnarled face of that big, big croc. That is not something that you want to end up in its mouth. Massive. And we can't even see its full body. Naira is wondering what length I would guesstimate this croc to be at. Well, I would say the, from the tip of his nose to the base of his tail, I would say he's probably longer than me. So um, I would say two and a half to three meters there. I'd say probably another good two meters on the tail. So he's probably between four and five meters long. Uh, for, forgive me, my, my maths is horrible. I think that's about 17 feet. I think. Well, if I'm wrong, correct me, please. Hashtag Safari Live. Uh, but the largest Nile crocodile ever recorded, um, there's two that have been actually recorded over six meters. Uh, one from the Congo River and one from the Zambezi. The one thing I've noticed about the crocodiles here in the Mara River is they're sometimes not as long as uh, some of the Zambezi crocs that I've seen, but their, their, their weight, their girth is incredible. They're much wider animals. So I'd say that that guy is well over a thousand kilograms. Now the males get quite a lot bigger than the females. And uh, quite interestingly that, well, crocodiles can be very t territorial, but it seems in the Mara they're even more so, more territorial. Because of course the, the main crossing points are what is, is the spot to be. Uh, that's where you're going to get the most food and only have to feed once a year.
Fizzrock was wondering that, and I said, yes, you, you can tell male and female crocodiles apart, but only, only when the males get quite big. And uh, once they get sort of over a certain size, you, you know it's a male. Females will very seldom go beyond three, three and a half meters, uh, but the males, as I say, four, five, and in some record cases, over six meters. The largest living croc thought to be around, actually also only lives about 70 or 80 kilometers from us in Lake Victoria. Uh, what was his name again? Do you remember, Jean-Dre? Gustav. Gustav. Gustav is his name, uh, and he lives on the top side of Lake Victoria and goes up into, I can't remember the river's name at the moment. But as I said, the, 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 the two biggest crocodiles that have ever been been recorded have actually been shot. Uh, one was in Point Noir in the, in, in the Congo, where the Congo River goes out to sea. And they estimate that it eaten about 25 people. And they're called in the military. And uh, they, they put, I think it was, uh, 170 AK-47 rounds into the crocodile before it expired uh, and that weighed just under 2,000 kilograms and was 6.4 meters making it the largest ever recorded Nile crocodile in the world. Now the second is 6.01 meters and uh, was shot on the Zambezi around the village of Deca. Uh, on the border between Zambia and Zimbabwe and again uh, it was eating a lot of people and both those crocs had lost most of their teeth and were estimated to be over a hundred years old so they might have turned to eating people because they they didn't have all their teeth hello rattling cesticulars Yes, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. You're very noisy. Now, we, of course, uh, rattling cesticular is the most common cesticular we get at Juma. Here we've got rattling, pectoral patch, stout, lazy, zitting. Uh, so there's quite a few cesticulars, and we obviously will try to show. Oh, I'm going to move for Jean to catch the yellow mantid widow, widow bird because it's so pretty. Okay, bye. I'm going down the turret. So I'm going to try to get Jean on the right side of the light. It's quite difficult for him. Oh no, you beep beep bird. It flew away. Well, we have a triple skirchy in front of us at least. I'm just going to still see. Can you see that bird, Jean? Is he behind us? It flew off. Okay, well, we've got some giraffe, but I'm going to just move a little bit further down this road. I want to show you, we will show you the giraffe, but I want to show you a Rupel starling, which is the East African equivalent of uh, the Birchill starling. Don't tell the Birchill starlings a Juma, but I think the Rupels is better looking. Now, it's the pale eye they have. You've got them there, Jandre. Here we go, there's a pair, so they're a very similar sized to the, the starlings. Now, you can see on the back one how pale that eye is, and it's, oh, there we go, thank you, Jandre. Look how gorgeous they are. Um, Jandre, do you think if I get a bit further forward, I might get better light for you? No, forward, will be worse. forward will be worse. Oh, fishy girl coming in, Jandre. There we go, African fish eagle. Oh, wonderful camera work. Wow, awesome, Jandre. Oh, and I've lost cell phone connection with Final Control. Hopefully they'll phone back shortly. Oh, there we go. The Rupals, are, there we go, they're phoning back, have put themselves in a better spot. Oh, sorry, Final Control, it's in my pocket. I'm getting it. I'm not ignoring you. Hi. Welcome back to the Mara. There we go. There's the Rupal starling. So they're for the same sort of niche as the, the Birchall starlings in South Africa. But I just think the pale eye makes them so much prettier. They also do have a slightly nicer color sheen to them. Or maybe I'm just biased. And of course we have the, the, the triple skirchies off to the left. There we go. Named after Count von Tippelskirch. 
and that's about all the information I've found. Now, oh, look at that. So that's a big male. Uh, I've actually sort of almost nicknamed them Triceratops giraffe. Now, he's... The, the, that, that sort of buildup of scar tissue on the front of their head they get from fighting in, in, in the Maasai giraffe, for me, is, is far more pronounced. And I saw one who literally had that, that buildup that was uh, exactly half the size of his horns. So I, 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 he lives near Juma. And, uh, I mean, not Juma, he lives near Angama. Sorry about that. I mean, so, you know, when you jump around countries, you get confused from time to time. And uh, I, I think I, I actually almost nicknamed him, uh, what did I call him? Triceratops Rex. And he's just, he's so tall like a, a Tyrannosaurus, and he had the third horn. Now, it, it obviously that, that, that develops in, in fighting, and what we notice with a lot of the animals here, uh, the impala, um, the ostrich, uh, that are constantly sort of in flux with breeding, they're, they're, they're constantly fighting for females. And I think because of the, the high nutrients and, 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 and food in, in these areas, that there's a lot more competition for mating, and that has caused the... the, the Triceratops rex giraffe of the Maasai Mara. I'll try. I'll, actually, I'll try post a photo of that guy who's got that really, really long, um, almost third horn in his forehead. Their colour pattern is just gorgeous, though. Okay, well, we're going to keep moving along the edge of the Mara River, and we're still hoping to find a member of the Paradise Pride or Scar. Well, Scar is definitely first choice. Oh, you see the vultures waking up. There we go. We've got some vultures waking up. As it gets warmer, searching for the thermals so they can cruise the Mara looking for death and decay. Now, the vultures are looking for dead animals, but Ali's looking for live ones back on Juma.